A few weeks ago, I made a video for you about the soft signs of labor, meaning the things that your body is doing to prepare to go into labor, but aren't signs that you are actually in labor. And in that video, I promised that I would do a second follow-up video about the sure signs that you are in labor, meaning things that you can watch for to tell you when it's time to go to the hospital to deliver your baby. Well, that is today's video. So welcome back to Diana in the Pink. My name is Diana, and I'm a physician assistant specializing in women's health and gynecology. I'm so glad you joined me today, and if you're new here, make sure to subscribe to In The Pink and also hit the notification icon. Now, let's jump into this video. So for some of you, this may be your first pregnancy, or for others, your fourth or your fifth or more. For me, I had four deliveries, an emergency C-section, a VBAC, which stands for vaginal birth after C-section, and then two more planned C-sections. So I went into labor just one time. So I would love to know where you are. Is this your first? Have you had a baby naturally before? Were you induced? Have you had a C-section like me? Put all that in the comment section down below. I'd love to know where you are coming from. So in the coming days to weeks before you go into active labor, your body will be giving you signs that it's getting ready to go into labor. You could notice that the baby is dropping deeper into the pelvis. We call this lightning. And you might experience this weeks before you go into labor if it was your first delivery. But you may not experience this until you are in active labor if you've delivered a baby before. You might also notice a bloody show or lose your mucus plug. You might get a burst of energy to organize and deep clean and prepare your home for your baby. We call that nesting. They're not signs that labor is imminent, just things to notice because your body's preparing for labor in the coming days or weeks. Also keep in mind, everyone is different and every pregnancy can be different for each person. So you might just notice some of these things or none of those things at all and that's totally fine and normal for you. Now if you wanna know more details about the soft signs of labor, I'll put a card to that video above here. So check that video out after you watch this one because what I really wanna talk about in this video are the sure signs of labor. The signs that your baby is coming today or tomorrow and that it is time to go to the hospital. So let's start off with your water breaking. We call this membrane rupture, meaning the membrane or sac that surrounds your baby, keeping the amniotic fluid around the baby, ruptures, and the amniotic fluid comes out. This is always what they like to show in TV shows and movies when a pregnant woman goes into labor. Oh! Oh! I think my water just broke. <laughs> But in reality, only about 10 to 15% of women actually have their membranes rupture before they're in labor. Most of the time it happens while you are actually in labor or sometimes your OB or midwife will break your water to help with labor progression. When your water does break, some women actually feel a sudden pop and a gush, like a water balloon has ruptured and it's coming out of the vagina and it often happens at night in bed, which is why I recommend getting some sort of waterproof mattress protector or maybe an incontinence pad so that if your water does break while you're in bed, you don't have to worry about cleaning that up when you come home from the hospital. But some people don't have a sudden gush of water. Instead, they feel more like a steady trickle of fluid. And when that happens, it can be easy to mix that up thinking that they are urinating and not that your water is broken. And sometimes it's hard to tell. I mean, it's warm fluid fluid leaking from the same general area as pee. Now if you are sure that your water is broken, go ahead, get your hospital bag, call your parents, your spouse, your significant other, or whoever else you need to notify, and head to the hospital. Because if your water has indeed broken, they're not going to send you home. And unless your membranes have ruptured early, you're most likely going to be delivering your baby in the next 18 to 24 hours. Now if you aren't sure if your water is broken, call your OB or midwife, and they might just have you go to the hospital to be checked out, or they might have you go into their office to be checked. They can test the leaking fluid with a strip of paper called litmus paper to check the pH. Amniotic fluid pH is very, very high, while urine or normal discharge should not be high. And this helps for them to determine if it's your amniotic fluid or if it's just leaking urine. By the way, if it is urine, don't be embarrassed. People get mixed up with this all the time. Sometimes there's no way for you to tell. And with a nine month uterus pressing on your bladder, especially if the baby is dropped, leaking urine is very common. So do not worry about that. So the second and most definitive way to know that you're in labor, more so than anything else that I've talked about, 
are labor contractions, not Braxton Hicks or practice contractions, true labor contractions. Because one thing that can cause a lot of anxiety for pregnant women, especially in their ninth month is, how will I know that I'm in labor? And this might especially be true for women who have already been experiencing Braxton Hicks contractions and may be wondering how to tell a true contraction from a Braxton Hicks contraction. And a common answer that you'll hear if you ask your friends and family is, Oh, you'll know. You'll you'll just know. Hi, I'm um, Phoebe Buffay, and I have babies coming out of me. And while that might be true for many women, I think I can give you a lot more to go off of than just, oh, you'll know. So as labor begins, the cervix will start to open up. We call this dilating. And it will also start to thin out. We call this effacement. Your uterus, or rather the muscles of your uterus, will start to contract at regular intervals. And as it does this, your tongue will become hard and you will feel strong intense cramping and when the uterus stops contracting it will relax and become more soft and the cramping pain will stop with Braxton Hicks contractions the contractions will be irregular so if you time them they will be intermittent and random they will not come at regular intervals Braxton Hicks contractions will also not be more regular over time and they will not become more intense over time. With Braxton Hicks contractions, they will get better if you drink a big glass of water and then lay down. Real labor contractions are regular. They come at regular intervals. So if you start to sense that they are coming in a pattern, grab a watch and a piece of paper and start tracking each contraction. They will follow a predictable pattern. And it's important to keep track of how far apart your contractions are. This is important because real labor contractions will come closer together over time. So as you're timing your contractions over a period of time, you'll notice that they are coming a little bit more often. So for example, maybe they started 10 minutes apart last hour, but now they are eight minutes apart, and then they move to six or seven minutes apart, and they're gonna come on more and more frequently. You will also notice that they're becoming progressively stronger, and each contraction lasts longer. Also, if you drink a big glass of water and lay down, while you are in active labor, the contractions are not gonna go away. If early on you could talk and carry on with activities with the contraction, you are not gonna be able to do that any longer. They're gonna start to become so intense that you'll have to actually stop everything you're doing and just breathe through the contractions. Okay, can't you just cross your legs? I mean, we're all kind of in the middle of something. Each contraction often starts in the low back and then radiate around into your abdomen. Or they might do the opposite. They might start in the abdomen and then radiate around into the back. Now as far as when you should go to the hospital, I highly recommend that you have a conversation about that with your OB or midwife at your next appointment as to when they want you to go. Make sure to discuss how much you might want to labor at home before going to the hospital. And another important thing to consider is if you've had other deliveries, how quickly did you progress during those deliveries? This is also going to influence how quickly you need to go to the hospital once you know you're in active labor with this pregnancy. Then you and your provider can make the decision as to how far apart they want your contractions to be before you go. But a general guideline would be that if your contractions are around five minutes apart and they last a minute or longer and you've been doing that for an hour or more, it's time to go to the hospital. Of course, if you live far away from a hospital, you might want to consider going sooner. Now, as I mentioned before, if your water breaks, go to the hospital. But I also want to point out that if you are starting to bleed, if you're having constant pain, so the pain doesn't go away in between contractions or if you are feeling the baby move less than you normally do, or any other symptoms that you are concerned about, call your OB and go to the hospital. Now the actual labor experience and how it feels specifically to you, like your experience, the events surrounding you while you're in labor, those are unique to you. And I can talk till I'm blue in the face about my own personal experience, but that's just one experience, my experience. So for those of you who've experienced labor before, I would like to invite you to share with me what it was like for you. What did your contractions feel like to you? Describe how they felt, where you felt them, how long were you in labor? What helped you realize that you were in labor? Or whatever you would like to share. Put that in the comment section below and also comment if I can share your comment 
on an upcoming video about what contractions feel like. Your experiences can help prepare first time moms with what labor might feel like and it empowers them to move on with their ninth month with more knowledge about what is to come. I think it'll be an amazing video and I want to share as many of your experiences as possible. So comment below or go to my community tab and comment there. I will have a post about this there in my community tab. I'm excited to hear from you. If you haven't subscribed to Diana in the Pink by now, this is the time to do it and remember to hit the bell icon. And if you did miss the soft signs of labor video, I will link to that video right there. Click on this link here and I will see you over there.